One part of the country that everyone is very focused on is the eastern part of the country, close to the Russian border. That was the, the home turf of President Yanukovych, excuse me, and that is where Lindsay Hilsom, our international editor, is based now in the city of Donetsk. Listen. The infamous Berkut riot police, reviled for their brutality in Kiev and western Ukraine. Not in Donetsk. Here, they're hailed as the heroes of the hour, the avenging angels of the East, holding the line between order and chaos. Thousands turned out today to show their support for the forces of the Ukrainian state. Many were ready with physical support too, in the form of baseball bats and other weapons. Ukraine, they fear, is being taken over by fascists and nationalists. Those who've seized control in Kiev are selling Ukraine to the European Union, otherwise known as Sodom and Gomorrah. On February the 1st, they demonstrated for the legalization of bestiality in Berlin. I heard there are 100,000 people practicing bestiality in Germany. In Lithuania, they were only seven votes short of passing a law where six-year-olds would learn not only about sex between men and women, but also homosexuality. Their loyalties lie to the East. I asked if they'd like to join Russia. Ukraine, Russia and Belarus, we're all one culture, one people, they said. Donbass, Donbass, they chanted the name of their region. This is the hometown of ousted President Yanukovych, but with his millions and his mansions, even they feel he's let them down. We don't support fascism or the West, but nor do we support Yanukovych and his party of the regions. He brought shame on his party and his people. None of the people I've been speaking to here say that they're out demonstrating for Yanukovych. He's over, they say, and he was corrupt. But they're here defending their municipal building and they're very worried about who's going to get into power in Kiev now. A few miles away, President Yanukovych's house lies abandoned. He tried to bribe his way through the airport here yesterday, but a customs officer refused. No one I met here today seemed to know or even care where he's gone. The police stood between the mass of demonstrators and the few here who want a new European-oriented Ukraine. They may have won in Kiev, but in Donetsk, they're scared and outnumbered. But are you not afraid? Look, all these guys are here. I am afraid, but I am tired to be afraid as well. So my choice was to come here and to show that I'm here to support. They laid reeds for those who had travelled to Kiev to call for change and lost their lives. They're praying that even here on the Russian border, people will accept a new government and that no more blood will be shed. And Lindsay Hilsom joins us now live from Donetsk. Lindsay. Matt, there were times today when I felt that I'd travelled not just in space but in time back to the Soviet Union. Just down the road from where I am, there's an absolutely massive statue of Lenin. And there are a lot of young men out there wearing leather jackets, the kind you've just seen in my story. They didn't want us to film. They were very clear that they wanted us to leave. One man actually said to me, you're from the European Union, get out. Now, if it's bad, if it's tense here, in the Crimea, which is to the south, people who are pro-Russia took down the Ukrainian flag. They said that they want independence from Ukraine. And somebody, it's a small group of people who are trying to defend the new order, people who are more in favor of the European Union. Well, one of those was very badly beaten up. There was fighting there. And I think that shows the kind of tensions that you've got here. Whatever is done in Kiev and between the different international capitals, what's going on here, that's another headache for the new authorities in Kiev. And I just heard from a senior politician here in Kiev that the new government does intend to sign the association agreement with the EU, which, as you may remember, is how this crisis started in the first place.